What's up everybody, I'm Awesome NES, and welcome to Zelda Month. Now, we all know that the next big entry in the Zelda series is coming soon, and even though there's tens of hours of footage released, we still don't know much about it. My goal today is not to learn story or explain mechanics of the game, but instead give my opinions on why I think it might be the best Zelda game to date. All the footage we've seen so far is exploration, exploration, cooking, exploration, fighting, exploration, dungeons, and weapons. Ooh boy, are there a lot of those goodies. Anyways, my number one favorite thing about Breath of the Wild is not the massive size of the map, not the countless masses of weapons, not the freedom, not even the fact that Link can jump, but there's like no gimmicks. Unless you count the Sheikah Slate as a gimmick, which I kind of do, but more on that later. When Nintendo first started showing off this game, it looked like it had a pretty straightforward story and was more of a reimagining of the original Zelda. We can't link. That's not all seeming to be the case, though Nintendo does still seem to relate it to the original Zelda. It does not have an easy to follow story. You just kind of seem to wander around without any specific goal in mind and just do stuff. For example, there are a handful of these dungeons called Trial Temples that I referred to earlier. You get sorts of apps for the Sheikah Slate for completing them, and I suppose if you do them all, you learn some bit of story and of what's going on. Or if you want to, you can just go look for the final boss and fight it right away. Or maybe never do any of that stuff, but just explore to your heart's content. I love that, and this one, it's your game. You pick what you do. Well, back to the whole gimmick thing. Well, yes, I do see the slate as this game's gimmick. It's not as gimmicky as previous Zelda titles. But before I get into that, I need to express that I am not using the term gimmick as something bad. In fact, my favorite Zelda game, Minish Cap, has the name of the gimmick in the title. However, they do get frustrating in some instances. Majora's Mask going back three days, Twilight Princess going back and forth from wolf to human, and even in The Wind Waker with changing the direction and all that but they don't necessarily ruin the game. But in the case of Breath of the Wild, this gimmick is somewhat optional. You don't have to do it. And even while using it, it doesn't really seem that bad. It almost looks kind of fun. It's one of the least gimmicky gimmicks I've ever seen in a Zelda game. Now that I've covered my favorite parts of this game, let's talk about some other things that I've just kind of glossed over at this point. One really great thing about this game is how big it is, but arguably even better is the fact that we can set beacons to help ourselves find our way. Because honestly, it's going to be pretty easy to get lost. But then again, maybe that's exactly what you'll want to do sometimes. Another cool feature is the ability to invite Wolf Link to your game via the amiibo and explore alongside him as your new companion. He's like your own personal hunting dog, Wolf. Man. Yeah. Also, I'm not sure if that affects the timeline or not, but I'll leave that up to Zelda Pro to decide. One last neat feature is this thing that Link does with a shield. I call it... Shield Surfing. Surfing high on this thing, but not really moving. Still surfing on this thing, still not really moving. Couldn't find a lot of footage of it though, but I'm sure that I'll really enjoy using this feature. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild looks amazing, and I cannot wait for it. It launches alongside the Nintendo Switch and the Wii U at Nintendo Switch's launch in March 2017. What do you guys think of this game so far? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.